welcome to this week's weekly productivity enhancer. Most of us are familiar with using linear and circular patterns. Usually it's the quickest and easiest way to create mounting holes on a part and it gives you a lot of freedom to edit that part as it goes along. However, wouldn't it be nice to be able to pattern the mounting fasteners or hardware that your mounting holes were built for? Luckily, SolidWorks lets us do just that in an assembly. So I've just opened up this assembly document and as you can see I have a table and a table leg. So let's go ahead and place this table right in the graphics area. Right now we're looking at the bottom of the table. And now let's insert the legs. And there's our table leg. The first thing we need to do is create some mates here. So let's go ahead and mate the outer edge of this flange with the inner edge of this recess here. There we go. And we'll accept it. Before we go any further, it is important to note that under this table, we do have a circular pattern. We have two, in fact. Circular pattern two is the set of four holes where the fasteners will go. And circular pattern three is basically circular pattern two pattern around the, the circumference of this table. So if we take a look at circular pattern three, you can see that these three are the pattern features and this is the original because it doesn't show up as orange. It's always a good idea to assign your mates to the original feature and not one of the patterned features. So that's all set. And we also want to make sure that these holes are mated as well. So we're going to make this a concentric mate as well. Accept it. And now we have that table leg exactly where we want it. So now we need to add our fasteners. And if we click on circular pattern 2, you can see that these are the patterned features. And this is the original back here. So what we do is go into our design library. I've already navigated to the bolt that we want and it's this socket button head cap here. So we can just drag this into the graphics area and make sure that our properties are correct. We do want M12, we want the length to be 20, and we want the threads to be cosmetic so that's all set. We just click OK and exit out so we don't add any more. Now we're going to spin around here and we're going to take advantage of some smart mates. By holding down the alternate key and grabbing right at the top, we can hover over the hole. And once that bolt is in the location that we want, the concentric and coincident mate that we want will also be added automatically. And now comes the important part. So if we've created all of our patterns correctly, we should be able to use them when we make the feature-driven component pattern. So if we go up and grab the feature-driven component pattern, we want to clear that selection. The component to pattern is going to be that screw. So the socket button head cap screw. And the driving pattern is going to be circular pattern 2, which will place that same fastener in all of the holes with the coincident and concentric mates. So if we accept that, we have all four of those fasteners in the exact spot that we want them. So we can take a step out and see what else we have to do to complete this table. We have those three spots where the legs and fasteners need to go. We can use that same exact feature-driven component pattern and the derived circular pattern that we just created is already selected, so make sure that that's selected. And then we want the socket button head cap and the table leg. For this driving feature, we want the global pattern that we created, which is circular pattern three. And then you can see three more legs show up with our fasteners and everything is good to go. And if you want to take a look, under mates, we have the concentric mate of that bolt and the coincident mate. And since we patterned that feature, it's already showing up in these derived circular patterns as well. Copies of the table leg have been created, and 12 copies of the socket button have also been created to fit in the holes of these last three legs. What's great about using the pattern tool for all of these functions is that if you decide that you want six legs instead of four, it's extremely easy to change that. All we do is edit that circular pattern three, and we'll need to save it. So save it as table assembly. And then we can change this four to a six, hit OK. And then you can see we have six of this pattern, and then all we need to do is exit that, edit the derived circular pattern, and hit OK, and that will update automatically. The number of components also updates automatically. Now we have 20 copies of the socket button head cap and five copies of the table leg for a total of six and 24. So this is a real quick and easy way to add components and edit components in an assembly by using that feature-driven component pattern tool. And we can take a look at our table, and it is good to go. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching this week's Productivity Enhancer. Until next time.